Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay, and um, we are finally up and going. Uh, we have um, experienced some te technical difficulties on today, but here we are, finally, 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 finally. Um, so happy to uh, be here, and I'm so excited about my guest um, for Dante's Harmony on today, um, talking about domestic violence. So. Um, we're going to get right to it. I'm, I'm really excited. And for those of you all that are watching on Facebook, please like and share this post. I'm really excited um, to start this new set of, of interviews and um, stories and podcasts that um, I'm really, really glad I kind of pivoted the platform a little bit so that I can expand um, some of the stories that I want to do and some of the people that I want to talk to. So please feel free to share and like, it's like this post. And if you have comments, be sure to place them in the comment section below. And, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So here, here we go. Hello again, and, and my name is Dante Harmon, and this is Dante's Harmony. We're so excited today. We're going to be talking to Lori, who is going to be telling us all things domestic, domestic violence, um, domestic violence awareness, um, stopping the silence as it relates to domestic violence. Uh, again, if you're new to uh, new to watching here at um, Dante's Harmony, please, please like subscribe uh, to this channel where we're going to give you more information on how to follow me and how to follow the podcast Dante's Harmony and uh, really excited to really dive into this conversation on today so stopping the violence last year it was last year this time I, I want to say Lori and I as well as uh, another friend of ours um, whose name just slipped my um Valerie <laughs> She's going to get me Valerie, who um, we all went live and we talked about domestic violence because it is something real. And um, they are both survivors. And it was so interesting because we were able to not only bring awareness to the subject of domestic violence, we were able to talk about things most churches, most people don't like to talk about, and even when it comes down to um, a family. Um, it's very, so we are very silent on this issue, but today we're going to bring some, some clarity. We're going to talk about it and ha have the conversation. So I'm, I'm excited for, for my guest today. Um, Lori, Lori has been around, um, gosh, for some time. We've been knowing each other for a long time. Um, Lori is, um, Lori is the CEO. Lori is the CEO of a, um, 501c3 company called, Victory Over Violence of Florida. And um, where she dedicates um, her time and, and her expertise, and even as a survivor, to other people who have been either sexually assaulted, who've been um, a survivor, or who are maybe some people who are not survivors of domestic violence. She has used her platform to talk about this subject matter. Lori has a book, and we'll dive into the book a little bit. We did the la last year when we were live together, and her book is entitled Free. Um, and I, I listen, go to the website that you see on your screen, um, author Lori, um, eawixsite.com. Go to Amazon. Listen, order the book. Order the book. You will not be disappointed. Lori is very transparent with her story. And she has a story to tell. So without further ado, uh, let me just bring her on. Hey, Lori. Hey. <laughs> How's hey. it going? Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is exciting. I'm, I'm so yeah. glad that we are able, li listen, with all the technical difficulties that we had today, you know, there's something got to, something's good gotta, that's got to come out yes. of this. Tonight. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Somebody's going to get set free tonight. 
Tonight, free, 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 free indeed. <laughs> so it, it, it was last year, this time we were having this conversation um, yeah. about domestic violence and, 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 and the issues with, um, mm -hmm. with um, domestic violence. And you were able to talk about it and you were just fresh off of publishing your, your book. So before I go into that, first of all, how are you? How are things? I'm good. Good. Yeah, it is busy. This, this is, is a busy, busy time, time of year, year for me. So, you yeah. know, just, just got, got a lot going on, planning a lot for the nonprofit, right. and, you know, work, work and, and, you know, kids, kids in school, but, you know, the work continues. So, so th this is good. So, th there is a, um, what I'm excited about is is just talk, first of all, how, and, and the book is doing well. Yeah, yeah I, I actually, I'm, um, I get, I get these bursts of people, people that, that are interested, and um, so, so far I've been invited to several events okay. this year. So, so there's a couple more book signing events coming out. out. There's some media offer events coming up, up and I'm, I'm just excited that the doors are opening to yes, talk good. more about the book. That's good. That's that's always exciting to know and to yeah. hear. And yeah. um, man, that that that's really that's really really good. So October is what domestic, domestic violence awareness, awareness month. month and a lot of people don't know that so we we definitely want to to bring some um, light to that it is domestic yes. um um do domestic violence awareness month so um you have been very active and your book is so transparent when it when it comes down to the subject of domestic violence um, mm -hmm. In your own words, just just tell me, or do you want to share a little bit without giving too much of your book away <laughs> of of what you um what what to ex what any reader that that may not have um, read your book what they would expect reading it. Well, they, well, they can, can expect to experience my life um, growing, growing up, up as, as a young, young woman, woman headed, headed off to college, college, big dreams. dreams. Um, heading off to the big city of Tallahassee, you know, with Florida State, FAMU, you know, you follow me on that journey of being an excited young woman to um, experiencing things that I was just not ready for. Um, I was brought up in church. That is mentioned up in the book how I grew up as a PK kid, very sheltered. Um, parents were very protective. Yeah. Um, they, they gave me that Bible-based foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but when I went to college, I experienced things that I just was not ready for as a young woman. Right. I was not mentally ready um, to deal with the pressures of um, just uh, premarital sex, promiscuity, whatever you want to call it. You know, I just was not ready for that. Right. And um, you know, fast forward, I. Got, got my life together, together met a minister, minister in church, mm. and uh, he had issues. Mm. He had issues, and um, that's, that's where the domestic violence, violence began. Wow. It began with a minister of the gospel. Wow. So now, we're gonna talk more um, about that. Yeah. yeah, as we progress in the conversation, but that that is so that yeah, it goes without saying. We we've been quiet for too long, and I think that was kind of the um it was it, it resonated with both of us when we said okay well what, we, what are we going to entitle our talk stopping mm -hmm. the silence stopping yeah. the silence with domestic violence so yeah yeah that that's that goes without saying that goes without saying mm -hmm. so we, we we're going to dive into that i want to come back to that <laughs> um because okay. that, that is so interesting um so so domestic violence month october is the domestic awareness a month mm -hmm. and you are very active in in your community um i've been uh before the pandemic of course i was a speaker at one of your mm -hmm. events um that you do yearly and of course you know with covid and everything that's going on it has yeah. kind of you know plummeted everything all of our efforts and plans of things that we want to do and we're doing right. what we're doing now going virtual um yeah. so so talk a little bit let's talk a little bit about um domestic um domestic violence and, and awareness with sexual um assault can can we talk a little bit about statistics i'm going to share my screen and just show show yeah. everyone what you shared with me in relations to the statistics on on domestic violence yeah, yeah so, so the, the 
the, the, the most recent, recent statistics mm-hmm. with like the uh, CDC's, CDC's National, National in, Intimate, Intimate Partner, Partner in Sexual Violence. violence. It's, 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 the words, words are interchangeable. So you, you can, can hear people talk about, about domestic abuse, intimate partner violence. It's, it's all the same. same. It's, it's all abuse. It's, it's, it's all the same. Um, but one in four women and nearly one in 10 men have experienced sexual violence, physical violence, stalking um, by an intimate partner in their lifetime. So when you're talking about one in four, that's 25%. So if we take that to our local community or our local church, if you've got 100 women, 25 of those women have experienced some type of violence or abuse. 25 out of your 100 women in your church. Wow. Wow. That is a, that is a huge number. And I don't think people really understand the, the mm-hmm. magnitude of those statistics. So... So when we talk about that in in statistic with with the statistics now these are these are current those these are current these are current, these are current. These are current. statistics yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that yeah you have about one four women, women and then, then one, one in ten, ten men so, so out of the, out of a hundred men in your church right. ten of them, them have experienced some type of violence or abuse and, and people, people try to you know, you know say, say this is a women's woman's problem no you've got some men have been hurt too. And that, that goes without saying, men, because men are very, we're quiet when it comes down to that issue. We're ashamed. Mm-hmm. We don't speak up. We don't talk. We don't say it um, out loud. And sometimes we, it looks crazy because of the fact that it's a man. Um, mm-hmm. But it is, a, it is an issue with men as, as well as definitely is, is with women. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. You get, you get 10, 10 men that, that have been, been abused. abused and mix them with 10 women that have been abused or violated or hurt. And these men, maybe it happened when they were younger or they watched their mom be abused and the issue was never addressed. Now you've got Got 10 10 men who have been been hurt hurt and abused. abused. Mix Mix those with 10 10 women women who have been been hurt hurt and abused and and tell them to go get get married. married. Wow. Wow. And that's never been addressed. addressed. And 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 no. right. So they don't know how to navigate through relationships. They don't know what it is to be in a relationship and to have that traumatic experience happen happen to them. There's no education. There's no no one I can actually talk to about the situation. You know, um there's in 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 even professionally, you know, I hate to say this, but especially in the church, we shun therapists, we shun counselors, mm-hmm. we shun people that are specialists in certain mm-hmm. areas because we like to over-spiritualize things. Would I be accurate in saying that? Yeah, just <laughs> pray about it. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, or, or just throw oil on them and rub them down and grease them down and, and just let, let, let that be the, you know, all, you know, all in all, fix it all and, and just let that be. But you and I know that it doesn't stop there and people really no. need to be educated no. and they need advice or they need counseling. They need therapy. They mm-hmm. need help. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, one of the things I, I definitely want to make sure um, we, we, we offer, and that is um, th- there's always a, a... Mm-hmm. There's resources. Can you hear me? Okay, there, there I go. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, so we have the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Then we have the National Domestic Violence Hotline which is 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-799-SAFE. So again, there's so much information that is, that is here um, and people may not be aware of what's right. available to them. So, right. um, so we, 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 talk about the, um, we talk about the statistics and it speaks for itself. There's so much out here. Um, there was there was a statistics that there was a there was its one um, specific 
statistic that you gave the last time, uh, and I don't know if it was you or if, if it was Val, about um, the minute or in, in within an hour. Do you remember that one? Every, every, um, I think it's 30, 30 seconds, seconds or 20 seconds or something, seconds or something like, like that. Somebody is abused or battered. Wow. You know? Wow. And... Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's it's astounding, astounding. and, and I, 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 would I would love to see the statistics since COVID. Gotcha. I would love to see the, the accurate numbers since the pandemic started. Unfortunately, there's probably not a really good number because a lot of people didn't report during the pandemic. Wow. They so were in isolation. isolation. They, they were, were in quarantine, quarantine with this person. Who are they going to talk to? Where are they going to go? You know, and, and to me, that's where families who say that's not my problem and not getting involved. Yeah, you have to, because if you love this person, like you say you love them and you know something's going on or you haven't heard from them, um, that's the time to intervene. You know, the last thing you want to do is find out someone was in a situation where they couldn't leave or their kids were hurt or something because you didn't want to get involved. You know, right. it's, it's kind of like, like when you don't hear from somebody or they don't show up to work. If you had a coworker that didn't show up to work for three or four days, you would say, hey, you seen so-and-so? Bobby's usually here by now. He hasn't been to work in two days. Maybe we should call the house. Maybe we should go by the house. Okay, let's take that to the church. If your pastor knows you are a regular member and you stop showing up, and you're normally there, why not do a well check on a member? Now that's something that I think you just, you just gave that, that is one of those uh, to do's. Um, check on them, be there, be there for that person um, and, and show up for them in, in some type of way. Some type of way. And um, to not do anything is just unacceptable. Right. 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 It's, it's, it's just, just not, not. Especially, especially if that person, you know, know they, they share with you that they, you know, know they're, they're either afraid, afraid of their, their, their spouse or something's happened in the past that they've shared with you. You can't just ignore that and to ignore it and expect, expect it to go away. That's just not being realistic. And when you're talking about different ministries and um, different things that you may be participating in in the community, uh, to ignore the fact that there are people suffering in silence, um, you're not a good steward. These people, you're in charge of these people. If you're a pastor or you're a minister or you're a, a leader in your community, those people have been, they are in your care. And to pretend like these things don't happen when we know one in four, one in 10, you know, it's happening. And this month, Domestic Violence Aware is our opportunity to bring these things to the forefront that people try to turn a blind eye to as if, well, we don't have to worry about that over here. Well, statistics say otherwise. That, that's, that is so interesting. And, and, and just to, you know, <laughs> it, it's, I think that's, that goes without saying, you know, uh, and I put what Val said. Thank you for joining us, Val. So good to see you. Val says they, they just say pray about it. <laughs> you know, she's right. And, 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 and we just do that. We, we do the over-spiritualized thing and we let it be. But the dysfunction is still happening. The right. abuse is still happening. The predators. Right. Thank you, um, Carissa. She's out there. She's joined us um, as well. Yes, they're ignoring it. The predator is still mm -hmm. on the loose. The person mm -hmm. who is, is doing the do is actually still out and doing it. Yeah. And most times, yeah. and, and if you can correct me if I'm wrong, most time the, the person that is being abused, the abuser is making them, is forcing them to be quiet about the abuse. Would that Absolutely. be accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, and the sad part about it, um, even with young girls, young girls, get um, touched inappropriately, which goes back to the sexual assault, molestation, those all those topics that people don't like to talk about. And those girls grow up to be teenagers who then are susceptible to being abused um, because they've been taught to shut up, be quiet, don't say nothing, no one's going to believe you anyway. Um, 
And that's sad. And those are the same girls that a lot of times when they walk into church, they may be dressed inappropriately. Are, are they are they addressed in love from someone else to say, hey, baby, let me talk to you? No, they're they're usually called, you know, that little fast girl, or, you know, she she always into something and she's this and she's that and she gets called all these labels and labeled instead of addressing the problem why has she become this way and why will she this same girl end up in a relationship with someone who treats her wrong uh they don't have to put their hands on her to abuse her there's emotional abuse you know verbal abuse mental abuse financial abuse there's all different types of abuse that can happen when a person already does not know their value um it, i'm so glad you said that um, um abuse comes in so many different ways i know we're we're talking yeah. about uh, you know domestic uh, abuse and 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 because october is domestic abuse uh, awareness month um most people only think about it in the, in just violence <laughs> so I'm glad you said that it, abuse comes in so many different forms. Yeah. Um, it, it, it can be financially, it can be verbally, it, can, it just can be so many different things. It just depends on, on, you know, the situation. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm so loving the conversation. Um, but I, I really want to dive more into this, especially with the church. Um, gosh, we, the one thing that we both share in common, we grew up in the same organization and um we we grew up in church i'll just say that we just grew up in church and in, in the church. church in the church you know <laughs> Six, seven days a week. don't don't get me started monday night <laughs> usher boy number one number two you know tuesday night prayer meeting wednesday night bible study thursday night choir rehearsal yes choir, choir number one and choir number two <laughs> and if you was a big church it was a choir number three and Terry service on Friday. Don't don't get started. Don't get me started. All night. All night. And and then we come back on Sunday morning and we stay all day. He has Sunday school, morning service, night service, afternoon service. Come on. And yes. a lot of times we're not dealing with the things that we we're we're we're, we're preaching, we are speaking in tongues, we're dancing, mm -hmm. we're we're hearing all of the good music, but where where are we really being ministered to? Um, yeah. where where's the effectiveness in our ministries when right. we have people in our congregations silently going through? tremendous trem, you know just just trauma trauma trauma, trauma. let me just say yeah. that they're going through trauma in their mm -hmm. own sitting on the pew smiling right. in church putting right. on face putting on the, face. the greeters the ushers the <laughs> i mean no, no. You know, and, 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 and now, now i know, know why, why we used to have, have that one mean usher <laughs> <laughs> well, one mean usher did anybody ever find out why the usher was so mad? Why she she's so, so mean? I, I think we 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 neglected asking, you know, because we and we all have we can all identify with something or somebody within the church mm -hmm. that just had they kept face, or they mm -hmm. they just there was something that was silently going on. Nobody yes. would knew. Nobody would know. Um, and, 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 and they just, you know, I like, I like Carissa's answer. She said they showed up mad and they hurt. Yeah. yeah. They showed up mad and they're hurt. They're yes. hurt. Yes. So, and, and nobody no, I, bothered to ask because you know what they say? Oh, you know, that's just how she is. And that's not acceptable. And no, I think that's no, the no. thing that we need to put the silence to mm -hmm. is that there is not okay. No, no, it's not, not okay. okay. And as a so so let's talk about this as a leader. I'm a pastor of a church and I'm trying to figure out, you know, you you, you know, you may not know what it is to to or, or someone to go through domestic abuse or uh mm -hmm. sexual assault or what mm -hmm. have you. As a pastor and as a leader, what do you say? What do you say cuz there may be somebody's going to watch this and they're yes. a leader, they're, they're a pastor, 
and and they have somebody they know somebody that is actually suffering through that and they don't know what to do they don't know what to do what, what would advice that, would you give them i would i would say one of the first things i would say being, being a, a survivor, survivor and, and having, having to, to approach my pastor during that time thank god for her she believed me so the very first thing a pastor can do if you know a member is being abused or a member uh, comes to you and tells you about an incident that happened. First of all, believe them. Believe them. Yeah, that's good. The worst thing you can do is blame a victim for something someone else did to them. You cannot, as a person, you can't control someone else's behavior. And as a pastor, you should understand that this woman did not, or this man did not want to be abused. And if they're coming to you, it's hard enough to even admit it happened than to make than someone to make you feel like it was your fault. So so wait, Lori. So so you've known leaders that actually play the blame game. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. They'll they'll blame the member, or blame the the person that is actually being abused. Yes. yes. Wow. wow. I have been told. I have been told personally, not by my pastor at the time. My pastor at the time was wonderful. Pastor McCleary helped save my life. But the pastor that my ex-husband was, the church he was attending, the pastor and his wife, we went and met with them. My pastor and I, she drove me to their house to say, listen, we need to tell you what's going on with your minister. And this woman, his wife told me, Baby, you need to pray for him. That's your husband. Um, make sure you're doing what you need to do around the house and make sure you're taking care of him and make sure you're doing this. And don't. It was an immediate turnoff. An immediate turnoff. Because and, and, and probably in that moment you felt helpless. Yeah, I'm like, we're coming to you because this is your minister saying, listen, this is a problem. And they only backed him stood up for him and we got in the car and i just i never addressed them again because they didn't understand that this was serious they didn't understand how serious this was and i would say to any pastor that wants to get this right believe the victim if someone comes to you believe me it was not easy to come to you it's not easy to admit that you're going through these type things so if someone comes to you believe them and if you don't know how to help them, there are resources out there. And as a leader in your community, you should know. And if you don't know, you need to go find out where's the nearest shelter. If you don't want your member in a shelter, have a plan for them. At least have some type of uh, uh, hotel or motel or something that you have an agreement with that you can help them or another single sister who has maybe room. And that was the blessing I had. I was in a church where the, the, the other ladies in the church allowed me to come stay with them. Wow, that that this is this is so good. Um, and, and the information that you're sharing is life changing. And um, my prayer is that someone is watching this feed or when this gets replayed again, um, that they heed your advice, they heed your advice. Um, because this is this is literally a, a, a life or death situation when it happens in 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 the process of of it happening. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and and put the information up again about the resources that are available. Uh, again, uh, National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. There's the website there. Um, National Domestic Violence Hotline 1-800-799-SAFE. Again, 1-800-799-7233. I think it's really, really important that people really understand the seriousness of this. Um, yeah. As a musician, as singers in church, working yes. in creative uh, arts and so on and so forth, people silently suffer. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be. Um, no. I, I, you know, and, and the thing about it, and, and, and I go back to your book, uh, you're, you're so transparent as you're telling your stories, as you're describing the way you felt going through certain situations. 
And um, I, I just want to advise or just encourage everyone out there, go to Amazon.com and go to or go to Lori's website and, and please download her book free, free. And it is a very good read. Um, and you would tell those stories in the church. In the church. Yeah, you know, this, um, this stuff. Yeah, yeah it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't like, like I was out in the world, so to speak. Um, this is something that happened in the church. And my life was saved because I had people around me who paid attention and listened to what I said was going on with me. And didn't just blow me off. Um, one thing about being a minister, a music, you know, minister of worship, or playing instruments, or the usher for that matter. If you have ministries working in your church, and ten to fifteen to twenty percent of these ministers working actively in your ministry have issues from domestic violence, from being sexually assaulted or abused or molested or whatever it may be, or watching their mom get abused or watching their dad get abused or whether it's alcohol abuse, drug abuse, whatever the addiction or the affliction may be, these unaddressed issues are hurting your ministry. Yeah. They're, They're hurting. hurting. Yeah. And because... I they get up and they're pr doing praise and worship. And I think I shared with you one time, I was up doing praise and worship. I barely made it into church before praise and worship started and um, had just had a fight, fight ended early that morning. I still had bruises and I ran in to do praise and worship because church was my haven. That was my haven. And I had on a long sleeve shirt, button up, not because I was so safe and holy, but I was trying to cover up. So I had long sleeves on. Mind you now, I'm in Panama City. But I had bruises on my chest standing up there in choir, in praise and worship, singing my heart out. I wasn't crying because I was so caught up in the spirit. I was crying because I was hurting physically. And people have to understand when your worship team is not clicking, or your musicians aren't clicking. Maybe, just maybe, we need to stop and assess the situation and address it. If you don't have the counselors on staff or the ministries on staff to address people who are dealing with abuse, people who have been traumatized by things that have happened to them, then seek it out in the community and partner with some community health organizations or mental health organizations to get this stuff addressed if you're about your ministry. You know, that that that's really powerful. And I really my, my prayer is a lot of the the ministers or those that are watching um, live with us on today that they take heed to the words that you're you're saying. There's so many times we see people in I, li I like to call it the church face. We, mm -hmm. we we just made up. We come mm -hmm. in and 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 it is it, it's just a, a, a you know just formality. It's formality, and and we just know how to wear it. Oh, we yeah. know what we know what to say. We know when go to say it. We go through the motions, and it's it, it's it, we're we we're, we're so disconnected. You know, yeah. from from the neck up, we're we try to be alive, but it's we're not we're not present. Um, and, and, and the sad thing I think about it is, is that nobody's asking questions. Nobody's wow. concerned. Nobody yeah. is uh, pursuing what it is we need to do to help or find resources to help this person, that person out, even in our own churches. Um, mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I, I know we, we deal with this stuff. People are ashamed to talk about it at home yes. people are, people are yes. ashamed to talk about it within their own family um, yes. because we we sometimes even within our own families we're we're ignorant to what's happening or what's going on or we mm -hmm. over spiritualize and there, there could be many other factors mm -hmm. but i just mm -hmm. know that we don't shed light on on what's obvious 
that there's yes. a problem. Yes. yes. I've, I've had, had um, young women open up to me once my book got published. Hey, young women opened up to me and someone came and confided in me because she had a niece who, when she would bring up being, you know, molested as a child or whatever, her mom didn't want to talk about it. She told her that was so long ago. You need, you really need to get over it. And that's sad to, to tell, tell someone, someone to get over trauma, just get over it. But that affects every aspect of that young girl's life. It affects your self-esteem. I'm speaking from experience. It affects your self-esteem, how you view yourself, how you look at yourself, how you allow other people to treat you. So you've got this function going on in the house and you've got to know that that dysfunction flows over into your ministry. And it does. And I think when people start to realize that and start to see it and call it out for what it really, really is, we'll start to see a difference in our ministries. Um, yeah. I think that's the, the whole thing. You know, we, we, I think we forgot the definition of ministry. It actually mm. means to serve. <laughs> what about serve. that? <laughs> that ministry Serving. means serve, serving. Yes. Um, yes. Jesus was a, a servant leader. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's exactly. Servant. He was a servant that's leader. It. So and that's the word, word I started, started using, using two years ago, servant leader. And there's there's meaning behind that. Yeah. And, and it, it, it means a lot when people see, you know, they when they understand the um, the, the position that you take, um, mm -hmm. sometimes as leaders, we don't necessarily have to come with the authority, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we love to, people that are in leadership love to drop their authoritative role or authority on situations that really mm -hmm. don't deem authority. Mm -hmm. And where there should be authority, we don't put the emphasis on what needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, where, where mm -hmm. the leadership needs to be taken. I, yeah. I think we really need to understand what's really happening. And, and as you stated, since the pandemic, it is, is I'm, I, and I'm sure, I know, I know you were saying uh, you would love to see the numbers. I am certain mm -hmm. that those numbers have probably gone up oh, because yeah. people Absolutely. have been isolated in their own homes. Yeah, yeah we, we did a um, survey. I did a survey some several months ago for the Sarasota Strong Group, and I surveyed um, the shelters and the abuse shelters, the local abuse shelters in the Tampa Bay area to see who had beds left, who had services available during pandemic. They had beds empty. They actually were not overcrowded because people were not coming. And that, that's scary. That's scary. So, you know, as community leader, leaders and um, pastors and ministers, if you had a congregation of just a hundred people, how, did you connect with these people through all this trauma? People have died. People have lost their jobs. People have no job to go back to. <clears throat> children at home, that's a crisis in itself. You got children home all day, but yet you only have one paycheck or no paychecks now. Um, how is How are we as ministries connecting with these people, checking on them? And then you throw in a little mental health issue here and there that's going to show up during COVID while you're home and throw in, you know, a little domestic violence in there. That that's an, an explosion, explosion waiting to happen. Yeah. And I don't don't bring up the, the whole mental illness thing that that's a whole that's probably a whole nother discussion within itself. Um, and I think, too, with 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 leaders and people that are unaware of of the, you know, what the, what abuse looks like, what domestic abuse looks like, right. what sexual assault looks like. It's, you know, the amazing thing of even about having this discussion is that resources are available. You don't have to have all the answers. I think mm -hmm. that's the big thing that, you know, that I want to that that's kind of a takeaway from me. You yeah. don't have to have all the answers. No. Um, it's it's about what you do to show um, or present. Sometimes um, having something there 
that's available to those that yeah. are suffering. And you may not know that that person was suffering, but because of the resource that was available mm -hmm. to those that are suffering, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you have someone that has actually come out of the shell and now is talking yeah. about something that they normally would not have been talking about exactly. because you made something available that normally wasn't. Right. Yeah. Just, Just start, start conversation. Start the conversation like we're having now. Start the conversation. It does not have to be taboo. It's not taboo. It's happening. And you can sit around and, and people can sit around and try to act like it's not their problem. But, you know, if you're a servant leader, you're a servant to all. You can't just say, well, you know, they got issues in a marriage. It, it It's not even about having issues in the marriage. Domestic abuse is so much more than that. You know, you can have some people that have been married 15, 20 years and be in a situation where, you know, uh, uh, someone has a mental illness now or a child is sick or there's all different type of things that can trigger certain behaviors. But but again, are we directing people to get some type of mental health counseling? Are we directing people to go get help or are we just saying, well, we just going to pray for them. We're going to bring them together and we're going to lay hands. We're going to put some oil on them and we're going to cast that demon out. OK, after you get through casting that demon out, give them a phone number to where they can get some help. Exactly. Um, or are you um, going to be casting it out next week? <laughs> exactly. Um, I love what Val said. She says talking about uh, DV, um, domestic violence over the pulpit is a must. I so agree. It is a it is a must. It is a must. We can't. There's there's we we just can't negate it. We we can't just walk over it like it just doesn't exist. And um, I, I'm so glad that we're we're having um, this conversation. And again, I want to um, um, as we're bringing this conversation to a close, I want to uh, bring those resources back up again so that they are uh, made available to to all. Um, I only listed the Florida Coalition Against Domestic Violence in Georgia. Those two are listed, I guess, because, you know, um, Lori, Lori is in Florida. I am in Georgia. But again, you know, I would definitely call the 1-800 number that is on the screen. Go to the hotline um, website dot org or just call 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-799-SAFE to get more information about domestic violence. Um, I'm so glad we're having this conversation, Lori. And again, thank you for for agreeing to to do this. Um, uh, again, with this being Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I think it's important. We're in this pandemic. Um, we 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 are we are both. Um, we 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 we've worked in education. I'm still working in, in the education field. Um, yeah. Our kids they suffer because of the silence. And, yes. and and sometimes the kids go through or they come to school or they're they're around they're in their environment they're in their surroundings and they're dealing and they don't know how to deal we see no. them acting out but we don't realize yeah. that the acting out is a result of some hurt that they're yeah. or some trauma that they're actually yeah. experiencing yes, yes. And, and don't, don't tr try and the thing first thing the teachers are going to do is assume you know, this child can't sit still, can't pay attention. So, you know, we need to go get him evaluated for ADHD. And it has nothing to do with that. You know, nothing, nothing to do with that. Maybe they have anxiety because of what they deal with at home. You know, you know it's, it's so, so much more, so much more. Um, I do have my five takeaways. Yes, I, I was just getting ready to ask you about that. So you, so, the, so we're getting ready to come to the conclusion, but you have five takeaways that you yes. wanted to share please 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 go right ahead so five takeaways <clears throat> as a minister as a pastor as a community leader what can you do for survivors first of all number one believe them if if someone is being abused if someone is has suffered assault believe them when they tell you and that's number one number two don't betray them so if someone approaches you, a member, a community member or neighbor approaches you, don't betray them when they entrust you with the information that they've been abused or they fear for their life. Because the moment you go and tell
tell that abuser or you tell the person that they told you abuse them, you could cause them to get killed. You could cause them to lose their life. So don't betray them. Number three, don't minimize their pain or their abuse. Don't minimize it. Don't tell them, well, it wasn't that bad. He didn't, at least he didn't punch you in the face or at least he didn't put you out the car. Oh, it's not that bad. Girl, you can get something to put on that. That's, do not minimize abuse. Do not minimize if someone comes to you and explains to you what happened to them. Um, number four, if you advise them to leave, the person that is abusing them, have a plan. So if someone comes to you and you're their minister, you're their pastor, you're their community leader, and they say, you need to leave, have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan and they have to return to the home where they're being abused, they could be killed. Their life could be taken just because they attempted to leave. The most dangerous time for a person suffering domestic violence is when they try to leave. And, and last thing, offer counseling, offer therapy. If they've got children, find a way to get those children into therapy. Find a way to get this person counseled. Domestic violence counseling does not cost anything. You can go to a local domestic violence shelter and get counseling. There are resources out there. It's not about the money. It's about you caring enough to invest in this person and make sure they are healthy mind, body, and soul. That was that was profound. Um, for those of you all that um, didn't catch that, I did put put it in the chat below. Um, su such great such great advice, um, Lori. Um, number one, believe them. Number two, don't betray them. Don't betray them. Number three, don't minimize their pain or their abuse. Number four, if you advise them to leave, have a plan. You know, I, I know this sometimes seems like it's common sense, but I've learned that common sense ain't so common. It's not. It's not so common. And number five, offer therapy, therapy and or counseling. I think it's important that we don't shun um, those, those particular roles. Counseling is very, very needed. Therapy is very, very needed. Mm -hmm. um, for for you know for us in the black community let me just say that um for most of us in the black for pretty much all of us in the black community therapy is 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 definitely needed um mm -hmm. we've we've gone through so much trauma within our own community that yes, yes. therapy is very much needed and we yes. shun it we don't we don't yeah. think it's important we think it's for a, a select group of people or we think it's for the right. crazy folks or all, all these myths we need to debunk um, yes. it's, it's not right. And we need it. We need it. We need to get back to ourselves. We need to, to, to understand that we're not actually crazy that, you mm -hmm. know, when, once I, I talk about it to, to someone that can help me, I, I'm, I'm actually better in myself. So yes. thank you so much, Lori. This is so, this is the advice that is given is so good. And I, I just pray that someone gleams, um, gleans from, from the advice that you gave. Mm -hmm. Those five steps are really, those five points are really, really good. Yes. yes. Hopefully, Hopefully somebody, somebody, you know, can, can get, get free. free. Can get, get free. free. And go Trauma. get the book. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, yes. but go get the book. <laughs> Find, Find out how, how to get, get free. free. Yes, yes. How to get F-R-E-E. F -R -E -E. Free. Yes. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. San Sandy Bailey says we need Christ and a counselor. I love it. Yes. I love it. I love it. Yes. So Jesus and a therapist. therapist. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you so much, um, Lori, for coming on. And again, this is um, um, National um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the month of October. And um, people are trying to um get in contact with you Lori. yes um i'm gonna put your 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 information on the screen but how can they reach you do you have a website 
all that good stuff for them to to reach you on? Yes. yes. So, so if you go, go to the website, www.victoryoverviolencefl.com, you can reach me there or you can go to Facebook, Instagram, send a direct message. It will come straight to me. And um, if you need help and you've not reached out to the hotline and you just need to be connected to resources, you can also reach me on Facebook um, through victoryoverviolencefl.com or you can also go to my personal website which is um lori a uh there's an author my author website uh is let's see author lori a dot wix site dot wait it's on there wix site dot com slash free or if you want the book go to amazon.com get the book Email me, authorlaurie at gmail.com. And also the phone numbers are on there. You are welcome to call me at the office, which is the 938-4797, area code 813. Or you can text me at 352-348-2244. Um, so I am available. Uh, I do workshops. I can present on, on multiple, multiple topics, topics related, related to, to domestic, domestic violence, violence and sexual assault. Uh, just contact me. Let me know. Well, Lori, thank you again. This is good. Um, you've given so much great information. And um, thank you all for joining us on today. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for, um, for not only the awareness that we were able to display on this um, Facebook Live, um, but on Dante's Harmony, my podcast, um, but to the, to, the many, to, the, to the millions of those that, are, that will be affected um, through hearing something that will change their perspective changed their life for a, a, a leader from a church organization or from from a community organization that will listen to this that will change their perspective on how they see abuse or how they see domestic violence and what we need to do within our communities to make a difference um i just right. hope that something was said something was shared a uh, thought was Kind of, a seed was just dropped, so so that you can just take a nugget and and yeah. and, and take it to your community and make a difference. Yeah. Make a difference. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lori. Yeah. No, thank, thank you, you for the platform. platform. Absolutely, thank you. absolutely, and thank you to everyone that has joined us on today for Dante's Harmony. Um, again, my name is Dante Harmon, and again, thank you, Lori, for for joining me and bringing awareness to this. Um, this disease called domestic mm -hmm. violence to this right. disease called sexual assault. Um, we, we really need to bring more awareness to, to this type of thing. So thank you again. And for those of you all that you. have joined me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will see you next time. <laughs>